Hello and welcome to week three, day two of week three, Tuesday, quarantine. I feel like I should, oh, I should have brought my green screen home. I'm going to make a note to go and get that. So today is weird for me because I got to go into the school building and I'm just making a note so the next time I get to go back in and I got to take some materials home. Uh, so they're all sitting in my truck. A truck trunk of my car I don't have a truck uh, no they'll stay there for a few days but I just wanted to have some more things like crayons that I haven't had um, but I want to take this moment to thank you all for continuing to listen to me ramble on with the stories and thank you to those who have been tuning in to the Google classroom art classes I've been doing um, kind of every other day it seems to be now Monday Wednesday and Friday seems pretty typical and who knows maybe I'll do it all through the week if I can come up with enough ideas I don't know if that's a lot but it was really weird for me to go into the classroom um, seeing students names written on the board it made me think of all the girls and boys who come in during lunchtime and sit with me um, and I miss them and I miss everybody I miss you all I miss being in the classroom and we're supposed to be there, not here at home in isolation. And it's weird how one day everything just changed. And uh, I miss you guys, and I think about you all the time. Um, obviously, because I can't get away from my computer and Google Classroom and Instagram and Facebook and trying to reach out to you guys. So thank you for listening, and thank you for participating. And I hope that we all get to be back together soon. Um, because this is unnatural. Anyway, let's try to be um, more positive now. And I keep trying to be a positive, creative light for you, and hopefully I can stay that way. Um, just today felt a little hard, and I think Thursday is going to feel hard too, because that's when our school play is supposed to be, and I'm feeling a certain way about that. So, um, yeah, deal with me. This week might be hard. But I'll be here for you whatever you need. So back to kid artists, all right? And we're going to read our next section. We're getting into the next section of the book. Um, I'm sitting on a new spot today, so I have to turn. You can see my extensive record collection. All right, it's closer. All right. That's good. All right. So part three, practice makes perfect. If you want to be a successful artist, you'll need to paint a lot of canvases. Fortunately, each of these kid artists had a teacher or friend cheering for them to succeed. And I hope that I can be that teacher for you guys to cheer you on to succeed, even through a screen. And our first artist is Claude Monet, which I don't know anything of his childhood, much like many of the other artists we've learned about, so this is exciting. Impress to success. You're never too young to make a good first impression. In just a few short years, Claude Monet went from selling humorous drawings on the streets of his hometown to helping invent his own style of painting. He owed it all to the kindly stranger who convinced him to put down his pencil and pick up a paint paintbrush. Claude Monet disliked being cooped up inside. Me too, Monet. <sighs> Growing up in the French port city of La, La Havre, La Havre, La Havre, I don't know how to speak French, La Havre, I'm, I'm guessing the H is probably silent. La Havre, La Havre, La Havre. <laughs> he would often skip school to roam the beaches along the Normandy coast. Um, or he would wander the docks, listening to the workers speak in foreign languages as they unloaded cargo ships. The outdoors felt like his natural habitat. School was always like a prison to me, Claude later recalled. I could never bring myself to stay there when the sun was shining and the sea was so tempting. And it was such fun scrambling over cliffs and paddling in the shadows. The sure beats school. I'd rather school right now, to be honest. Claude inherited his love of nature from his mother, Louise Justine Aubry Monet, a refined and elegant woman who liked to paint and write poetry. 
She used to carry around a pocket-sized sketchbook all the time. The better to record her impressions of the town and its inhabitants. By contrast, Claude's father spent most of his time indoors. Claude Adolphe Monet was a grocer by trade. He preferred that his second son follow him into the family business, but Claude didn't want that job. From an early age, he set his sights on becoming an artist. Claude, are you done stocking the fruit? But here you see him drawing, young teenage Claude. At school, Claude was drilled in Latin and Greek, reading and arithmetic. He also took an art class with a French painter named Francois Charles Orchard, who tried to teach him how to draw figures in the classical style. But Claude was far too independent-minded to follow Orchard's instructions. I was born undisciplined, he later said. Never, even as a child, could I be made up, could I be made to obey a set rule. What little I know at, I, blah, 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 try that again. What little I know, I learned at home. Instead of copying figures out of textbook, Claude liked to doodle in the margins. He filled page after page with sketches of sailing ships and funny portraits of his teachers. I drew the faces and profiles of my school masters as outrageously as I could, uh, he said, distorting them out of all recognition. At family picnics, Claude would hand out sketchbooks to relatives and challenge them to a drawing contest. He always won. And here you see, well, that's pretty good, but you made my nose too big. I don't know when characters first came out, but that might be one of the first types of characters if he's making all those portraits of people with exaggerated features and such. I've never had a character character drawn of myself, but that could be fun. A family friend named ooh, here's a big name. A family friend named Theophile Biguin Billy Cope. encouraged Claude by buying some of his pictures. His sketches, whether in crayon or pencil, were always excellent. Billy Cook wrote in his journal, he knew how to capture the essential characteristics of a scene. Before long, Claude became well known in his town for his amusing character sketches. Pass character sketches, see, I told you. Passerbys would ask him to draw their picture and pay him 10 francs a sketch, francs being the French form of currency then. Within a month, the young artist's clientele had doubled, and so had his fee. Had I, gone in there, had I gone on like that, I'd be a millionaire today, he later said. And here's a young Claude. I'm rich! Makes me think of, uh, is, it, is that Darkwing Duck who always, no, DuckTales, the uncle in DuckTales diving into his uh, pile of money. DuckTales, woo! The owner of the local art supply store started hanging Claude's pictures in his shop window. Each week, a new one would appear. Soon, there were five or six of Claude's characters lined up in a row, each one in its own golden frame, like a work of fine art. Claude swelled with pride every time one of his neighbors walked by and recognized the person portrayed in his pictures. One day, the shop owner introduced Claude to a man who would change his life forever. Eugene Baudin was a local landscape painter who liked to work outdoors or in plein air. Plein air is what it's called when you paint outside, as the French word would say. Baudin liked to paint beach scenes and images of his ships moored in the harbor. He had seen some of Claude's drawings and thought he had potential to be a painter too. I always look at your sketches with much pleasure, Baudin told him. They are amusing, clever, and bright. You are gifted. One can see that at a glance, but I hope you are not going to stop at that. It is all very well for a beginning, but soon you will have enough of caricaturing. Bodin invited Claude to paint with him in the open air. Study, learn to see and paint, draw, make landscapes. They are so beautiful. The sea and the sky, the animals, the people and the trees, just as nature has made them with the character, character their true existence in light and the air, just as they really are. At first, Claude declined Baudin's invitation. Though he loved the outdoors, he had never painted nature scenes. 
Besides, his character is already sold for far more money than Baudin's landscapes ever did. And here's a little greedy, greedy Monet. You must come and paint with me outdoors. And he's too busy counting his money now. I think he's losing sight of why he makes art. Over the next several months, Boudin repeated his offer, but Claude always came up with a reason not to accompany him on his jaunts to the countryside. Finally, summer came, and with it the end of the school year. Claude had plenty of free time and had officially run out of excuses not to join Boudin. Besides, the weather was so nice that the idea of spending some time outside was starting to appeal to him. I have uh, people texting me, sorry. So, one day... Claude gave in and went on an outdoor painting excursion with Boudin. Together, they headed out to the coast near the mouth of the Seine River, which is a major river um, in France and cuts through other parts of Europe. Claude watched with fascination as Boudin um, daubed his canvas and began to paint things he saw. The sandy beach, the open sky, the puffy clouds, the sunshine as it dappled the water. And here you can see a picture of them walking out to paint somewhere outside. He's got his foldable easel and an umbrella to shield himself from the harmful sun rays. Looking on, Claude was overcome by a deep emotion. I was enlightened, he said later. It was as if, as if a veil had been torn in aside. I had grasped what painting could be. This was way cooler than drawing characters. Inspired by Boudin's example, Claude worked feverishly on his own canvas. It wasn't as good as Boudin's, but it was a start. Claude had found a new inspiration. My way was clear. My destiny decreed, he said. I would be a painter, come what may. By this time, Claude was living with his aunt in Paris. While there, he noticed many young painters copying the works of old masters, just as he had done back in Monsieur Orchard's class. But thanks to his friend Baudin, Claude had found another path to making art. He spent his day standing by an open window, painting what he saw. Claude spent the next several years in Paris. He befriended many of the artists who would later join him in founding what became known as the Impressionist Movement. Along with artists like Edouard Manet, Pierre-Auguste Renoir, and Paul Cézanne, Claude Monet went on to change the face of art forever, but he never forgot where it all began. If he had achieved any fame as an artist, he once admitted, it's to Eugene Baudin that I owe the fact. His art teacher. And then you see him by his open window painting the view. So, next, or next time, I lost my post-it note. Next time we get to talk about Pablo Picasso, and I will have to repost that, but I wonder if you um, can think of what the project is I'm going to um, task you with should you choose. Um, you, if you have anything to draw with or paint with, um, you should do your own plein air painting, meaning paint the outside as you see it. So if you want to stand by an open window and draw from there, you should try that. Um, and try it, if you're painting, try doing it at different times of the day. In the morning, in the afternoon when the sun is nice and high, and in the evening as the sun starts to set, and you'll notice that the colors change. And um, I believe, I'm going to look it up while I'm talking, but I believe it was Monet who did um, a study of a cathedral. Yeah, Cathedral D... Rowan, I think it's called, Rowan Cathedral, and he did a series of that painted at all different times of the day, cloudy, rainy, bright, morning, noon, and whatever, um, just to show the way it can change drastically the colors with the different light. So if you're curious and learning more of that, look up Claude Monet, Rowan Cathedral, that's R-O-U-E-N. And uh, you'll see what I mean, and I would task you to try to do the same. Paint the houses across the street from you and paint them at different times of the day and see what they end up looking like with the different lighting and colors. All right. Um, miss you again. I love you all. And we'll see each other soon. Okay. Bye.